Hey guys, it's Matt Hoots here with Sawhorse. I'm at the 1920s Makeover ATL and we are at the framing stage. Actually, we've completed framing and now we're doing the air sealing. Now what I've got behind me is the zip system. Now with the zip system, there's different ways of sealing the seams because this is a weather resistant barrier. Now what we're gonna do on this house is we're using a liquid applied. Now this is called liquid flash. Now you can also use liquid flash or you can use the tape on these seams. Now in this house, we're choosing to use all liquid flash just to show you that you can seal a house completely, get it down to very close to passive house standards, way beyond the energy code just with this system. Now, I'm trying out something new here. I've got this little applicator at the end of the liquid flash. The reason is, as you can see up top, we've got lots of liquid flash use. You're paying a lot per tube. Now, these are retailing probably 50, 60 bucks a tube, depending on where you go to buy them. And with that, plus all of the, the labor that's involved in this, you wanna be make sure that you're using enough of this, but not too much of this, because applying too much doesn't necessarily get you any tighter of a house and therefore, you're just wasting money. So we're gonna try this applicator real quick. Now, several different things. We need to make sure, first of all, that we fill this seam. So I'm gonna take the applicator off, fill the seam, see how that works, and then put the applicator back on to kind of spread it out. Now, again, this is just an experiment. Hopefully it does work out, but so far I did a little test sample earlier. It looked good, and uh, we're gonna keep on trying this out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add just a little bit to the actual seam itself. The reason is we want the, this to get into the crack, but not, not too much on the, uh, on the outsides of it. So now I'll put the applicator on, and as you can see, you've got these little holes, these little grooves in here. I'm gonna squirt it in on one side. Now I found this in the flooring department at Home Depot. This is used for putting adhesive down. And then I'm gonna take the other side of it and kind of spread it out. Okay, you see, it's still got some little grooves on there, so I'm gonna take the back side of it and spread it out. So I think this is a win. I think this is gonna work pretty well. Now, if you look up top, you're gonna see that we use lots. We used a, the, the, the spreaders that came with the actual liquid flash in the boxes. Not bad, but what they're recommending is doing like a little, like filling the gap, doing a serpentine back and forth, then spreading it out. I'm just finding that we're wasting a lot of product doing it that way. Now, this is, uh, I think like two and seven eighths, two and three quarters, a little bit wider than we need it to be. So if I can find one that's maybe, or even tape off the edges. Uh, I spoke to Huber earlier today, and they said we only need one inch on either side of this. So this right here is probably close to three inches, an inch wider, but in some cases I've seen like four and five inches on different parts of the house. Again, we're wasting a lot of material, again, where we don't need it. We just need to be able to fill in the gap and also make sure that we have a little bit on both sides because this, when this dries, it's not coming off. It's just gonna be, a, it's gonna be a permanent membrane. And if there's any movement in the house, that's why they want a little bit on both sides and not just caulking the seam. Now let's also talk about the nail heads. If you look at the nail heads here, um, some of these are overdriven. They recommend anything that's over half an inch, definitely you fill this up. You don't have this to do this on every nail head, but we are gonna be doing it on this, on this project. So let's go ahead and um, just use a little bit of this extra on the backside, fill the nail head in. Now with this, there's a little bit on the side. Really all they said that we need, and you could probably just take a putty knife and go around, take some of the excess off of, of these other areas and, and fill the nail heads in. They said we only need to fill the nail head in. We don't need a bunch of stuff around on the outside. So theoretically I could scrape this off, use it somewhere else and save a lot of this liquid flash. So most builders only use tape. And what they do is they tape the seams only and what that does is it basically prevents air from coming in out of these cracks and this is also as, acting as a weather resistant membrane now weather resistant membrane is just any water that gets past the cladding and then hits this is going to drain out and then it's not going to make it into the assembly and it's also needs to be a little bit breathable so this does have a perm rating to it which means that if water does get in or water's trying to get in out from the the inside and through this assembly it's still able to dry out now if you're just using tape and there's nothing wrong with just using tape and probably after doing the whole house in liquid flash, we're going to use, we're going to experiment with some other combinations of just using tape and using fl liquid flash in some of the areas where tape isn't going to work. Now, probably where liquid flash is best is at the bottom and top plates. If you look across the foundation where you have where the, the sheathing meets the foundation or sheathing meets the bottom plate, liquid flash is very good. 
you've got that raw exposed edge. And what this is going to do is one, seal up the raw exposed edge and it's also going to attach this to the foundation. If you do a blower door test and we did one blower door test already on this house, it was very leaky. Just with the sheathing, we're gonna do another blower test and we've, we're gonna have all of these sealed up. We're also gonna have the bottom and top plates sealed up with the liquid flash, showing you that the sealing of the sheathing is very important to not only meeting the requirements for the energy code, but if you're gonna build a passive house like we're building, you need to make sure that you're going above and beyond to get to that low ACH 50. And why does it matter like how low the ACH 50 is? Well, when you're doing a load calculation in a house and designing the HVAC system, when we first started out in this house, it was super leaky. It was probably 20 ACH 50. We, we approximated what the HVAC would have been needed at that point. It was probably around 15 tons or so. Now, if you just meet code on a house this size, you're probably gonna be like around five to six tons. Now, because this is a passive house and we air sealed it even more, we're able to get it down to about two to three tons, or probably closer to two tons. Um, if we're looking at the insulation that we're adding, we're gonna get less than two tons. So insulation and air sealing together matter. If you just add a lot of insulation, don't do the air sealing. You're kind of wasting money because air is passing through that conditioned air that you're paying a lot of money on the inside is going through the wall assembly to the outside, through the roof, through the foundation. So that's why you need to make sure it's completely air sealed all the way around. Now in this house, we're air sealing the roof, we're air sealing the panels, we're air, air sealing the foundation. So basically any penetration, any grab, anywhere where air can come through, we're sealing up. And it's also in this climate zone, we're in Georgia, any water that's going through the assembly as well. So during the summertime, you're bringing all that hot, humid air into the house. And during the wintertime, all that hot, humid air, or the, the humid air that you're trying to keep inside the house is going to the outside because it's always going from high humidity to low humidity. So basically you're drying your house out by having all these gaps in the house during the wintertime. So in Northern climate zones, that's why it's very important to make sure that this is air sealed to maintain that humidity and the heat during the wintertime. And in the South and in Atlanta, we're kind of equal on both where we have equal heating degree days and cooling degree days. So whatever we do for the summertime is also gonna benefit us in the wintertime as well. All right, so we had one of our crew members use this applicator and they said, um, you know, it was okay, but they said it put on a little bit too much. So my recommendation is, Put it on as thin as possible. You can see this towards the top where you can just see where the, as the, this is an adhesive applicator and we're using it for a different purpose. We just have a few beads up there. So put it on very thin. Again, this is a little bit too thick. So you can, you can see how far this is gonna spread out. And that's way, that's way too much. So really you need to be from here to here, only one inch on either side of this. We're wasting an extra inch out of the side by, by applying too much. So if you're gonna put a little bit on, put it on sparingly, spread it out, and really all you need is about two inches wide total because you've got the crack sealed and just a little bit of a membrane to kind of hold on both sides in case there's movement in the zip system and that's all you need. This is just one of many videos that I have about the design and construction of this house. We've got a full playlist in the upper right hand corner. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you can get more information on this project and other projects just like this.